management consultant to independent Dáil deputy before seeking comfort in numbers as joint leader of the newly formed Social Democrats. Stephen, you were there minding your own business, making a nice little ball of money, and what happened to you? Did, uh, did someone call a bluff or something that you ended up as a Dáil deputy independent? Yeah, my wife sometimes, descri sometimes describes it as a pub rant that got completely, uh, completely out of control. <laughs> sure. um, we had two very young kids. Uh, I was back, uh, we were back in, back in Ireland, and I think I was lucky enough to study in a Kennedy school in, in Boston and studied uh, international development, and I think you leave that school uh, imbued with a sense of public service. And, and hence you found yourself on, on the opposition ind independent uh, bench. Yeah. And, and uh, it, must be, it must be terribly frustrating as a, uh, an enthusiastic uh, new deputy with huge ideas to be there and be basically ignored by the, by the government of the day, which is essentially a national government. You do get some things th through, so you do occasionally get a win. So Ross McGuire and I, for example, tabled a bill on the mortgage crisis called the Family Home Protection Bill that Alan Shatter, as then minister, brought in, um, which is providing serious protection to tens of thousands of families who are uh, at risk of being evicted. Um, with the other independents and members of the technical group, we have had some success, but yes, it is absolutely the case uh, mm. that in our parliament, which is a very weak parliament, compared to other democracies, um, not just as an independent, but if you're not a member of cabinet, uh, it is very difficult to get things done. So yeah. one of the things that uh, I've done now, I, have, if I consider myself very fortunate to have got together with uh, Catherine and Roisin um, and form the Social Democrats, and there okay, is strength so we're, all, we're coming down with political parties at this stage. So what, what three things would you do uh, if you got your, your hand on the levers? Well, there's a lot of things, Jerry. we would do. We formed the, pol the party based on four core principles of progress, democracy, equality, and sustainability. And at the moment, we're developing policy around three big themes. One of the themes is economic strength. Another one is social vision, and a third one is open government. And we've laid out on the website, for example, two big policy areas in each of those areas. Stephen, and I'm sure it's a weakness on my argument, and certainly on yours, because all new parties say this stuff. Do you know, uh, until they're, they're tempered after a while through experience and all the rest of it. And you present policies, there's no costings on them. You talk about assisting people who are in mortgage stress, you talk about concentrating on zero to six years for children uh, in terms of their future progress. Uh, there is no costing. Uh, well, there are costings against a lot of it, actually. So, so various of the mortgage pieces I have uh, in a previous budget submission with very detailed costings against it. And we will be putting together a budget submission. The Social Democrats will have a fully costed budget submission, which is the time for costings. We've just launched the party, and rather than get into um, the very detailed uh, policy around costings, which obviously will come through the budget, what we wanted to do is lay out a vision and say, look, how do we best achieve potential for the country in the future. And in our view, what you need is a political approach that combines economic strength and social vision and open government. So we've started by saying, this is what we're about. These are our core values. This is who we are. Um, here are some of the policy areas that we are very interested in having. These are the sort of policy areas we would be uh, interested in, in in negotiating a program. But everybody program is inter government. interested in those policy areas. And, and I suppose to get a, a, a kind of the cut of your jib, we'd want mm. to know what, what type of possi possibilities we face if people support Social Democrats mm. uh, in, in the next election. Who are the people nearest to you in government or in opposition now that you would perhaps consider for partnership? Well, can I just say to, to the first part of your question where you say, well, everybody is in favour of these things. Well, actually, everybody isn't in favour of these things. So if you look at our mortgage proposals, mm -hmm. um, the mortgage proposals have been developed with experts working in the field. Um, they would go a long way to helping hundreds of thousands of men, women and children still suffering from the mortgage crisis. Um, and that here, would mean financial help? Uh, yes. Effectively. Yeah, that yes. Would, that would also yes, mean would. a financial negative for the banks. No, no, not necessarily. So, so for example, um, if you ever go into one of the courts where the repossession hearings are, are mm -hmm. uh, going on, what you'll be struck with immediately is that the men and women who stand up, whose houses are at risk of being uh, repossessed, most of them clearly haven't had any financial uh, representation or expertise, and most of them aren't standing up with legal expertise. That's something that really doesn't cost very much money at all, um, and it's something that the banks have... Um, 
supported. Another big one on the mortgage crisis, for example, would be reducing the bankruptcy uh, period from three years to one year, at least while we're still dealing with the crisis. Now, in the Finance Committee, I've asked uh, each of the chief execs of the main banks, and would, would, would they have any, been any, 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 any issue with it? The time, the and, really isn't interested in processing that. The government isn't interested in giving in to that at all. Yeah. And so, which of the opposition parties I mean, for a few. I mean, people are entitled to know, aren't they, when they come to, uh, to towards uh, making a decision in the election, what way you will be leaning in terms of partnership. It's far too early to say, Jar. We've set up the party four, four or five weeks ago. Right now, we're focused on raising money, um, talking to candidates, building up local teams, uh, and developing policy. Who we might or might not go into coalition with uh, in March or in April, we don't know yet. Right now, what we're saying is. We're not ruling anybody out, but we're really not thinking about that. And what would we're you consider right going into partnership with uh, Sinn Féin, for instance? We're not ruling anybody in or out. No, but that, that answers it, doesn't it? Well, well, yes, if you don't rule them out. Yes, now, see, I, I, I guess it That's interesting as well, because I, I discussed this with Conor Linehan last night, and I find this uh, massively interesting, actually, in the context of what we've gone through in this country over the last 30, 40 years. You have moved on, have you, uh, as Stephen Donnelly, in respect of... The, um, the litany of crimes that were created or were carried out by the Republican movement and others in Northern Ireland. You no, know, Chair, we're, we're not remotely in that space. We set up a political party five weeks ago. No, but you've said you haven't ruled out uh, an alliance or a partnership I, I, no. with Sinn Féin. Well, ye yes, but what I'm saying is we haven't ruled in or out an alliance with anybody. What we're, what we're doing right now is saying we have formed Catherine Murphy, Roisin Shortall and myself. We have formed a new political party. We formed a political party that we're very excited about, that there are thousands of people getting in touch and saying, we like what you're, we like what you're saying, we, we, we want to get involved. What we haven't done is sit down and work through detailed electoral okay, strategies. I'm, I'm so, so, what I'm, so, yeah. just, okay. so what I'm saying is, right now, of course we will have to give much great, consideration, greater yeah. consideration yeah. to that. Okay. Of course we will. But right now what we're focused on is uh, launching and now growing. So you're making the point that by not ruling out anybody at this stage, it, it certainly doesn't mean that you would consider, at the point of consideration, going into partnership with Sinn Féin and others. As I said, we're not yeah. really... Yeah, okay. we're not really issue of open anyone government, in the what do you mean by that? One of the biggest surprises I had going into the Dáil five years ago, coming from being a, be, being a private mm -hmm. citizen, was the way that the Dáil is run. Um, in other countries, you have a balance of power between the executive or the cabinet mm. and parliament, right? So in the US, we all know... It's just the cabinet rules here, probably yeah. a few within the cabinet. But yeah, I, so, I just, so, so let me give you an yeah. example. Can, can I, you wrap this up? Because I want to get on to a particular point about the, about the uh, imposition put, the debt put on Ireland. Can you, can you get quickly through your point? Yeah, sure. So Irish water. It's a complete disaster from, from start to end. Mm. In a normal, well-functioning democracy in Parliament, Cabinet would come in, they would discuss it with the committee, it would go back to Parliament. A lot of the problems that have surfaced would have been resolved and the legislation, yes, the legislation would have gone through. It wasn't just rushed through. The entire legislation was put through in three hours. And when it came back in again, again, the government came in, um, Alan Kelly and the Thornish they made their speeches, and before... Uh, Parliament has even allowed debate it. They walked out. Yeah. R r let me give you one more yeah. example. Uh, Roisin Shortall was a, was a junior cabinet minister, uh, could now be in cabinet. What did she do? She took an incredibly principled stand that said, in her opinion, primary care centres, a critical part of our public health care infrastructure, was not being allocated based on need. That is mm -hmm. closed government. It is government that is not based on evidence. It is government that doesn't match public resources. So she walked because of that. So she took a very principled stand. I just want, I just want to so, get so, you... So, so there are two, two good yeah, examples okay. of what better politics would I be. I want to get you, get to you uh, uh, on this issue. Uh, you've been very impressive in, the doll, <clears throat> in dealing with the huge catastrophe financially that the country has, has faced. Would you have... Uh, the, the way that the pressure came on us from the EU to pay bondholders to, to save French and German banks, how would you have stood that? Would you have told them to, to buzz off? And would we have faced the same sort of stuff to have in Greece today? No, I, I, I don't think any comparison to Greece works. Ireland is in a completely different space and was back then. We're a completely different country. So government TDs are very fond of saying, oh, so you want us to be like Greece. But that's like picking a Latin American country or an Asian country in a completely different situation the and saying, so you want us to be like those. To be fair to this government, I don't think anyone who wasn't in the room and who hasn't faced what, Michael Noon and the others have faced 
can ever fully say because we don't know what they knew. However, I was speaking recently in Limerick at a, uh, the Limerick Spring and I was on the panel with a guy called Philip uh, Legrain. Now, Philip Legrain was Barossa's uh, chief economic policy lead. And he said there was a deal to be done and there should have been a deal. I absolutely believe that a deal, didn't stand up. a deal should have been done and could have been done. However, I don't have all of the information that Michael Noonan and others, others have. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, Stephen.